Right, welcome. So, Graham Watson to the EU Asia Centre. Graham, the EU has been so preoccupied with its internal problems that many people think that it's really neglected Asia. Do you think we can afford to neglect Asia at the moment? No, we certainly can't afford to neglect it. Asia is a continent with tremendous challenges and tremendous opportunity. It's a continent with 60% of the world's poor, but also with a very high number of the world's young people and a culture which is tremendously uh, adapted to entrepreneurialism. And I think the opportunities for increased European engagement with Asia are massive, but also the need for us to engage, to deal with the global challenges of things like uh, population growth and migration, or climate change and energy security, or internationally organized crime, is also very important. Now, you, you have a prominent position in the European Parliament, and you are engaged as the chair of the EU-India delegation, but do you think overall your colleagues in the European Parliament recognize the importance of Asia, and what are they doing about it? No, I think there has been a tendency in Europe, as we have built the European Union, for people to become somewhat Eurocentric. But I'm very pleased to note that there is a small and dedicated group of people from all political parties who are aware of the importance of engaging, engaging with Asia uh, and who are taking action to that effect. And with EU India relations and your chairmanship of that delegation, how do you see the prospects now for EU India relations over the coming years? I think India plays a key role because if you look at Asia at the moment, you have 1.3 billion people in the north, in China, living under what is still quite an authoritarian regime. And you have an equivalent number of people in the south of Asia, across India and Indonesia, living in democracy of one kind or another. It is important that we build that bulwark for democracy to make sure that the future for Asia is an open and democratic one and not one which is still haunted and influenced by the communist ghosts of the past. And finally, Sagan, how do you see the high-level talks? I mean, we have, for example, postponed an EU-India summit. We've just had to postpone an EU-China China summit. Do you see or have any understanding at the highest levels in the EU that they recognize that you have to engage at the highest level with interlocutors in Asia? Yes, I think both of those instances, and they're for different reasons, were unfortunate. The EU-China summit was postponed because of the need to find a solution to Europe's sovereign debt crisis and its crisis of bank capitalization. The summit with India postponed because we're really not making any progress towards a free trade agreement. Nobody wants a summit if there's nothing to announce. But there are many examples you can find of areas where things are working. For example, the free trade agreement with South Korea, uh, recently signed, already having a hugely beneficial impact in South Korea and in Europe. And I hope that as we develop our relations with Asia, we will be able to come to a greater level of understanding and perhaps slightly better planning to prevent incidents like the postponement of a summit, which potentially could uh, cause loss of face and perhaps embarrassment with major strategic partners. So, Graham Watson, thank you for talking to the EU Asia Centre.